Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special edition of Realer Sports in Depth. My name is Peter Rosenberg, the man to my right, Nerlens Noel from the University of Kentucky, originally from Boston. Uh, expected to be a top five NBA draft pick. Would you say that's what a fair assessment of what people are saying about you? Uh, yeah, that's a fair assessment. Um, okay, so first of all, what's that like? What's it like as a kid who obviously has been obsessed with this game, knowing that you're three weeks out from draft day and you know you're going to be drafted to the NBA? What is that feeling like as the kid who grew up dreaming of doing it? I mean, yeah, it's definitely a dream come true. I mean, growing up, I uh, just really want to play in the NBA. And, I mean, to just be in the discussion of a top three, top five pick, I mean, that's just – a dream come true in itself, and I mean, I'm just really cherishing every day. I mean, I'm just taking it all in step by step, and you know, just really, really, I'm taking it all to account and making sure I, I'm not taking it for granted. I'm really um, just knowing that I'm blessed. Are you slowing down? Like, so you're doing your best to, like, slow down, like, when you have that moment when you're meeting someone exciting or maybe another player or, you know, like, everything, just stopping to smell the roses because this is a pretty special time. Oh, yeah, whenever I get the opportunity to meet someone that's very influential, I mean, I take that all in. Um, you know, I definitely take that advice. And, I mean, it's not every day you get to meet. You get to meet the Teddy Brewskis of the world. Or, I mean, I mean, from actors to, to um, other basketball players to, I mean, really anybody that's so influential and, I mean, has been through this. So, I mean, whenever I get the opportunity, I make sure I see it. You're from Boston originally. Where in Boston exactly? Uh, right outside of Boston, Everett. Everett. Are you a Celtics fan? Yep. First of all, do you think that you think everyone's coming back for one more year? You think the Celtics will get everyone back? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll have to say they'll be back for one more. Year, I think they'll do least. one more. Yeah. I think they. I think they'll all want to do one more with Rondo. I think they want to see mm. what they could do with all of them actually there. Mm, yeah. You know, it's hard to end it when you didn't get to see what they really could have done. Exactly. I'm always curious about this about ball players in particular, basketball players in particular. Just how much time did you spend playing basketball as a kid when you were 10, 11, 12, 13 years old? That period when you're starting to know you're serious and you're preparing to try to play high school basketball. How much basketball were you playing every day? Uh, I was always playing basketball. I mean, I would always travel around. I mean, no matter where I went, I always had some basketball shorts under whatever I was wearing. So, I mean, whether I went to the park or, I mean, I was in the gym, I mean, I was always prepared to play. And, I mean, I was playing nonstop against no matter who it was. So, I mean, I was I was a real active kid on the court. So, I mean, regardless of where I went, I was always playing. Every day? Like, I, like on a day-to-day -day basis, mm. if you would go outside at 4 o'clock like to work on jumpers or whatever it might be, how long were you actually staying outside and playing? Oh, man. I mean, it it, it, it vary. I mean, I was set out to be out there for an hour or two, and um, I, I'd probably go from 4 to 8, 4 to 9. I mean, I mean, just playing pickup with some guys that came in the court. I mean, those are those are just long hours, and those are just me enjoying the game, just loving it. So, I mean, the countless hours don't really matter to you. I always just think it's interesting to point out because, you know, so often you meet kids who are like, I want to be a ball player. Mm -hmm. And I remember I felt the same way. Obviously, you know, some things worked out in your favor height-wise that didn't work out in my favor. But even if even if it had... I wasn't able to put in the hours that were required, and I always think it's interesting because you know kids are obviously obviously looking up to you for them to know just how much work you're talking about putting in. Like as much as you loved it, and to you you didn't even notice it because you were so obsessed. It really does pretty much occupy all your time. I'm guessing. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you gotta take this. You gotta take it very seriously. I mean, you gotta see it as a job but you you know you gotta see it as something that's fun too you always gotta make sure you keep the joy in it and i mean you gotta see it as a craft i mean you always want to perfect your craft and that's something that that um speaks for itself i mean i i see this job as i see, I see basketball as a life job for me i mean i mean i know it, it opens up a lot of doors and i mean just through the love of the game i mean as much as um it's able to do for me and my family i mean that's definitely a blessing so, did you get? Were people disappointed in in uh, in Lexington that you that you decided to do one and done, and you didn't even get a full year in Kentucky? So, being how good you are, I'm guessing, uh, you know, that people were probably somewhat disappointed too because they were so excited to have you, and they got you till February, and then you decided to declare. So, a, 
did you feel that people were disappointed? And B, what do you say to those people who, you know, they're not mad at you, but maybe you're just bummed out that you're leaving? Um, no, I wouldn't say they're disappointed or they're mad. I mean, I mean, Coach Carr ha- has had a couple plays that have gone one and done. So, I mean, I think they're a little, a little, a little used to it. Um, not really used to it, but. They, it's, it's not shocking. No, nah, yeah, right. not shocking. But, I mean. I mean, just know how modern medicine is today. I mean, I definitely thought I made the best decision. And, you know, um, I'll be able to come back stronger than before from this. So, I mean, I definitely felt um, it was a good decision um, to go on to the next level. And did you always assume that was going to be the case, whether you had gotten injured or hadn't gotten injured, that you would probably do one at Kentucky? And if you played as well as you did, that you would then move on? Um, no, I mean, I, I went into the university, the University of Kentucky just looking to get better. I mean, I wanted to really work on my game and become a better player and a person. And, I mean, that's definitely what I did. Um, I went in there um, with an open mind. And, I mean, Coach Khaled has taught me so much uh, not only on the court but off the court. So that's, that's something I got to be appreciative of. Now, when you were – obviously, you couldn't participate in the tournament because um, you were on the shelf. But – were you watching when Kevin Ware had his injury? Yeah, I was. T- tell me about what that experience was like for you as a player and as a fan. Um, just take me through that because I thought it was an incredibly interesting moment for all sports fans. What was that like for you? Oh, uh, yeah, that was something crazy. I mean, I mean, just for something to happen like that, I mean, just, you, never, you never would think that that guy had. That looks like a car accident injury, I mean. And for him to just jump and come down, I mean – what did you do? Like, did you get up? Were you, like, physically repelled? Or were you kind of, like, were you able to see it? Because for me, I'll tell you the truth. My wife told me she works in sports. My wife says, did you see what happened yet? I'm like, nah. Mm. I'm, I was downstairs getting food or something. So I get upstairs. She's like, just, it's bad, but you, you got to see what's happening. Mm. So when I get upstairs in my apartment, I left the TV on. And when I walk in, the TV's on, but it's silent. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? It, it's silent on TV. Mm. And I look, and the crowd's just silent. So I go back and watch it, and I'm not going to lie. When I saw what happened, I, I got up, went to my kitchen, and tears rolled out of my eyes. Like I was sitting like I was just so flabbergasted like by what happened. Mm. Did, were you in shock, or was it, as a player, was it something that you feel like you're like, oh, well, I'm, maybe I don't picture it like that, but I know injuries happen? Oh, uh, yeah, I was definitely in shock. I mean, for a bone to come out of your leg in a basketball game, I mean – I mean, you got to be in shock for him. And, I mean, I, I felt a lot of sympathy for him, I mean, just from an injury to an injury. But, I mean, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a road back. I mean, it's, you got it's, you got to see it as a challenge and look to tackle it. And, I mean, when you come back, you got to definitely come back stronger than before. Did anyone reach out to you after your injury who's been through the um, ACL thing before? Because, obviously, much more common injury, very common mm-hmm. injury now. But it is a, a scary one. Uh, yeah, many people did um, from – from um, Rondo, I spoke with Rondo, I spoke with Lou Williams, um, Derek Anderson. How's Rondo, by the way? Uh, Rondo's doing real good. He's good? Yeah, he's doing real good. Um, oh, sure damn, y'all are like double brothers. Because you're <laughs> Kentucky brothers, and he's on the Celtics, and you're from Boston. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we talk um, from time to time. He's a, he's, a great, he's a great dude, and, I mean, he's definitely giving me some good advice through this. And How much time do you have to spend just every day doing different kinds of rehab? I'd say I spend about five to six hours a day rehabbing my knee. So yeah. is some of that just sitting home in front of the TV and doing stuff? Or is it you mean you're in a facility doing that? Yeah, I'm in a facility when I'm doing it. I mean, I'm doing a lot of extensive exercises um, to really get my strength and my agility back in it. How how are you now? Can like, you can you jump yet? Can you... Um, nah, I'm doing a lot of court work now. The most I could do is jog. So, I mean, that's that's, that's pretty good for the um, time period I'm at now. Okay, I got to ask you this question, the obligatory question, even though you're not uh, likely to give an answer. Um, <laughs> do you have a preference? Do you have a preference of where you end up um, on come June 27th, the NBA draft? No, I don't have a preference. Um, I mean, the teams with the higher picks, I mean, they're all great organizations and I mean, if I get chosen by Cleveland, Orlando, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll just be blessed to play in the NBA, and I mean, definitely get my all to whatever team that chooses me. Now, is there is there a chance that you could slide as far as my hometown team, the Washington Wizards, at five? Is there five? 
Uh, are they five three? or three? Three. Oh, they're at three. Mm-hmm. So all you got to do is all you got to do is slide two. So there is a <laughs> chance you could end up in in Washington. Could happen. Uh, yeah, I guess there is a chance, but I mean, you always gonna fight for that number one spot. How tall are you? Um, I'm six t- six eleven. Six eleven. And don't you have like? Didn't you set some sort of like cr- crazy block record while you were at Kentucky? Uh, yeah, I had a um single game block record with twelve blocks. Twelve blocks. Mm-hmm. Was that a Kentucky record or an NCAA record? That was a Kentucky record. Because I think Shaq once had like, I think Shaq once had like fifteen. Yeah, or something like yeah. That. He was he crazy. was disgusting. At, at <laughs> so six ten. Damn, what's that like, man? How's that six ten life? How bad is flying? Flying? Yeah. Is flying on planes a nightmare? Oh yeah, especially those little jets, man. It's crazy. Like, what do you do? Like. Th- those legs, like, th- how do you fit that in an airplane? <laughs> I mean, I just got to adjust a little bit. I mean, ho- usually the flight attendants usually uh, pretty good with that, so she'll move me to so exit So they'll row. see if he can put you in an exit row at mm-hmm. least. Mm-hmm. Nah, that's why you got to get, that's why very soon, don't worry, very soon things are going to be looking more like first class. Maybe <laughs> some uh, uh, private jets, PJs, as Meek Mill calls them. You know, mm-hmm. maybe that's the, the next step. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Getting to yeah. stretch out and sleep a little bit. Yeah. Um. Do you, is there a player in the NBA that you sort of aspire to potentially have a career like? Um, I, I'd have to say growing up, I definitely looked up to Kevin Garnett. I mean, just through the intensity and passion he always played with. I mean, just the love for the game and his leadership. I mean, I definitely look to um, emulate my game after his. Do you curse and yell as much as Kevin Garnett? I don't curse and yell as Ugh. much as him. It's tough. Yeah. I'll be honest, even as a Celtics fan, I am terrified of him. <laughs> He seems like a teammate who you do not want to mess up with on the court. That guy <laughs> exactly. takes the game serious. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, uh, Nerland, it's been a pleasure, and uh, good luck come June 27th. I hope you end up in Washington, but if you end up somewhere else, hey, congratulations to you for that as well. Thank you. But uh, congratulations on all your hard work, man, and I think um, uh, I hope you enjoy this experience seeing everything that you worked for you know, turn into something. Because a lot of people get caught up when they talk about athletes, there's a lot of BS that gets associated with it, and people like to pull negative stories. But for me, I always remember the kids I knew who were athletes, right, and who worked really hard and who never made it to the level you made it at and busted their ass just to end up being D3 players. Or in some cases, like my cousin spent his whole life playing ball. Granted, he was only 5'9 or whatever, and he became – in in Boston, actually, he played at Needham High School. And all he made it to was being, you know, like all county. You know what I'm saying? I still saw the work he put in. So I can't even imagine the work you've put in to get where you're at. So congratulations and, uh, and good luck. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it, it, bro. No doubt.